In network models, before the data is being transmitted, it has to go between different protocol check at the transport layer. This layer identifies any error or corrupted data that is being transmitted over the network channel. Hi guys and welcome to yet another interesting video by Simply Learn. But before we begin, if you love watching tech videos, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from us. Now without further ado, let's take a look at the agenda for transport layer in the OSI model. To begin with, we will look into what is an OSI model. Moving forward with what is the transport layer in the OSI model. Continuing with the functions available to the transport layer. And lastly, we will look into what is the TLS in transport layer. Now let's take a look what is an OSI model. The OSI model is a specifically designed set of protocols that govern communication channels through which network devices share input and data. This task of sharing information is divided among seven layers of the OSI model for micro level network communication. Now let's move on to the core topic for this session that is what is transport layer. The transport layer is responsible for overseeing the data being transmitted and check there is no error in the data using different network protocols for example UDP and TCP. Then these data segments are shared over the connection and non-connection network services. It also identifies suitable communication channel for the data. Now let's move on to the next heading that is the functions of transport layer. Before we begin with the actual functions of the transport layer, let's take a look at the data flow that occurs between the multiple layers of the SI model and the transport layer. To begin with, the session layer will share data packets over to the transport layer where it will be checked for various errors or corruption in the data received. It is then transmitted into smaller units over to the next layer. In between this, multiple protocols are applied in the transport layer, for example, TCP, UDP, SCTP. And then these data segments are shared over to the bottom layer. Now, let's take a look at the functions available for the transport layer. The first is process to process delivery, multiplexing and deep multiplexing, congestion control, flow control, and lastly, error control. Let's move on with each of them in detail. The first is process to process delivery function. In this function, it is one of the main tasks of the transport layer that is designed to effectively deliver data segments to the correct process among all the working application over the sender side. This task applies a 16-bit port number to identify the sender destination application correctly to transmit data over the network channel. Now let's move on to the next function that is multiplexing and demultiplexing. The first term is multiplexing. It is also one of the core tasks of transport layer to allow simultaneous use of multiple networks over the sender side and this is known as multiplexing. Whereas demultiplexing is executed at the receiver end to obtain data from multiple senders application. Now let's move on to the next function that is congestion control. This function is used to handle traffic of data in the network model which arises due to access data being transmitted over the network channel. The congestion control of data is handled in two parts. The first is open loop control, which is applied to stop congestion condition in the network channel. Whereas the second control is known as closed loop control, that is applied to eradicate the 
congestion situation in the network model. Now let's move on to the next function in the transport layer. The next function is known as flow control. The transport layer performs flow management services in the TCP IP network model in a communication channel. This channel applies the sliding window protocol principle to handle the data flow in the network model. To know more about the sliding window protocol principle, you can watch our previous videos. Now let's move on to the last function of the transport layer. The last function of the transport layer is known as error control. The transport layer also checks errors in the information received from the upper layer in the OSM model. Error detection is performed using the checksum method or error detecting codes to check corrupted data. Acknowledgement and no acknowledgement services are used to inform sender if the receiver has received corrupted or damaged data through the network channel. With this, we have cleared all the functions related to the transport layer. Now let's move on to the last setting for the session. That is, what is TLS? TLS stands for Transport Layer Securities. The TLS service is responsible for providing enhanced security to the transport layer in the network model. To ensure that the external services do not affect the data being handled in the transport layer, TLS performs a main role. Let's take a look at some of the TLS services in the transport layer, where the first is known as encryption, which performs encryption procedures for sensitive data being handled in the layer. Next is hidden. Many of the TLS services are invisible to the client side and are only available to the transport layer for being used in data. Compatibility. Most TLS services are available for multiple web browser and are compatible with multiple devices. With this, we have cleared all the points regarding the transport layer in the OSM model. If you have any questions regarding the topic, you can ask them in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.